Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the WWE Universe Wave 4 featuring Seth Rollins, the Slayer of Kings and Beasts. The Fiend, Evil Lord of Fireflies, Jake the Snake Roberts, Evil Purveyor of Poison, and the Heroic Pityer of Fools himself, Mr. T. This is a really, really good wave. Uh, there's a lot here that I've very much been looking forward to. Uh, I know a lot of folks out there were excited for Mr. T. Definitely, that's one that I was very excited for. Not something I ever thought we would see in this line, uh, but it's really cool to see him. Jake the Snake is another great old school one. The Fiend, man, he was screaming for a Masters of the Universe style figure. So this is just a really, really great looking wave, and I'm very excited to check these out. You can see behind every figure, they do have their own little insert. It's kind of like a one-page mini comic. We'll take a look at those in just a bit. And as we look at the back of the pack, packaging for all of these guys. We are once again treated to some absolutely amazing artwork. Uh, and it's really cool because all of these pieces of artwork throughout the Masters of the WWE Universe line, they all pay homage to various uh, original Masters of the Universe pieces of artwork, sometimes from mini comics and posters and stuff like that. So it's just really, really good stuff. But Man, you got like Jake the Snake peeling off his face to reveal the snake underneath. You've got Mr. T doing some cool blacksmith work, making his golden gloves. Uh, you know, you got the fiend with like a crazy axe hand. Uh, man, some really, really incredible stuff there. Down below that, we've got a nice cross sell like we've seen on all the other figures, as well as cool little action feature callouts that show you the different things that each of these figures can do. Uh, holy cow, the fiend's mask can move. I am really excited to check Check that out. So we're going to go ahead and get all of these figures ripped open and we're going to get a closer look at each one of them. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys these because each figure comes with their own mini comic, though it's not really much of a comic. Uh, it's only got like one page to it, but it's still cool. It features some brand new artwork. It does tell the story that they're kind of laying out for WWE Turnia, which is actually pretty fun. And it's a total homage to the Vintage Masters of the Universe mini comics, with a lot of these covers paying direct homage to the covers from a lot of those mini comics, which is very, very fun. So if you take a look at the inside there, they actually give you like an image and a bio for the character. Then they tell like a little kind of like four panel story here. Um, look, you got like the Snake Mountain ring here with uh, Seth Rollins. We got this fun Mr. T comic here. Look at that. I ain't getting to know Talon Fighter. How great is that? It's totally an A-Team reference. I freaking love it. That is so cool. Uh, you know, you got your Jake the Snake one here, which is really cool. Look, look at this. Look, Macho Man at Arms is tied up to the ropes with snakes. I mean, come on. That's what a great homage to such an iconic moment in the history of WWE, WWF. Um, but I really got to point out this, this Bray Wyatt one might be my favorite. Because they totally do the Firefly Funhouse thing. And look, Bray Wyatt is dressed like Prince Adam. I don't know. Something about that just tickles me. I think that is hilarious. And then, of course, he turns into the fiend. Let him in. Yowie wowie. Love it. So this is great. I think they're having a lot of fun with this line. Just doing some real, real silly stuff. Uh, which has great Easter eggs for both Masters of the Universe fans and WWE fans. All right, so let's kick things off with Seth Rollins here. Uh, I'll bring in the tape measure so you guys can see that the figures stand just shy of a full six inches tall uh, as they are actually in that like five and a half inch scale. They're supposed to be scaled like vintage Masters of the Universe figures. So that's why they have kind of those really buffed out bodies. They have like the squat legged poses. But we're on wave three of these, so you guys probably know that by now. You guys probably also know at this point that they share the uh, construction from the new Masters of the Universe Origins toy line. So there are some shared parts here uh, between that line, but also with the previous Masters of the Universe Classics line, which is really interesting stuff. But because they share those parts with Origins, the articulation is the same on these figures. So the heads can go left and right. They can roll around. They're on a ball joint there. You can see the shoulders go outwards, forwards, and backwards. Swivels at the elbow, bend at the elbow, swivels at the wrist, hinge at the wrist. You can turn them at the torso. You got those hinge-like ball joints at the thighs. 
legs can go outwards, forwards, backwards. You got bends at the knees, which are hindered a little bit because the, these guys all have like knee pads usually that kind of cover the knees. You can still bend the knee um, and then you can also swivel at the knee there. You've also got the boot cut articulation and then the ankles can go forwards and backwards as well as rock side to side. And that also means that they have the same interchangeability as Origins. All of these figures can have the heads removed at the ball joint. They can have the arms removed at the sockets of the shoulders. They can have the wrists removed at the pegs at the wrists. They can have the torsos removed at the waist. And they can have the boots removed right there at the boot cut. All of these can be swapped between each other and the Masters of the WWE Universe line, but also you can swap them with your Masters of the Universe Origins line. So if you're somebody who likes to mix and match parts or customize, uh, these toy lines right here are a dream come true for you because it's very easy to swap parts. But it also makes it fun for like mixing and matching just to kind of create some different looks for these guys. All right, so Seth Rollins uh, is featuring Zodax armor from Masters of the Universe, but it's done in black and gold, and it really actually works very well for Seth Rollins because it sort of looks like his shield chest protector or the top that he was wearing on some of his more recent gear. Um, but what's really interesting about this is that it's the Zodak armor from Masters of the Universe Classics, not from the recent Origins Zodak action figure. Uh, when I line them up all side by side, you can really tell the difference, specifically when you look at the back of the armor. That's the real dead giveaway that this is actually the armor from the Classics Zodak. Um, so that's pretty interesting that they went that route instead of with the Origins one, which is also a figure that's like hitting right now. Now, one thing that's really interesting about this is this armor doesn't seem to be removable. On the Masters Classic Zodak, you could actually pop these straps off right down here at the bottom because they're just pegs and then you can pull the armor off. But for some reason, these are glued in place on Seth Rollins. Uh, these don't pop off. And I, I really tried. Like, I was really trying to force those out. They are definitely glued in place. So most of the uh, different characters in the Masters of the WWE lineup, you can kind of remove their He-Man parts and make them just five and a half inch looking wrestling figures. Uh, but you almost can't do that here. Like you almost have to leave this Zodak armor on, uh, which is fine if you just want to pretend like it's his chest protector. But I even tried like, you know, removing it off the torso here, but I feel like it's going to be very hard. Like I can't get it to really bend and then it'll be hard to probably get back on here. Let yeah, so you could probably get it if you work at it a little bit, but I don't know. I was really surprised that they glued that on because we haven't had that really with any of these guys. They've all had removable armor so far. So otherwise, he's pretty cool looking. I mean, he looks like Seth Rollins. He's got a good likeness to the head there. Full beard, long hair. And he does come with one accessory in the form of this flame sword. You know, because burn it down <laughs> intro intro music why wouldn't he have that now it's worth noting that if you were a fan of masters of the universe classics this is another reused part it is the flame sword from drago man which is the one i'm holding in my hand right now um with just less paint and color <laughs> so the handle's not painted this time and they just went with sort of like a semi-translucent orange plastic all the way through and through instead of the multicolored plastic but still neat it's a cool reuse of a really cool accessory from the Masters of the Universe Classics toy line. So that's going to bring us to Jake the Snake Roberts. This line has done a great job of giving us modern superstars, but also a lot of the classic superstars. This Jake the Snake is one that I was really looking forward to in this line because he is really fun. He is a bit more gimmicky than we've seen from a lot of the characters in this line. So first of all, uh, he is wearing like these great purple boots. He's got the green tights with the purple snakes on him, has that very, very cool 80s look to him. But he's also wearing some new battle armor. Now this battle armor, while very similar to the armor we saw in the Masters Classics line, is actually the new armor made for this line. We first saw it with Macho Man in this line, so it's the same kind of thing. But this time it's painted black with some purple on there. And then it's got that awesome green snake, which definitely looks like a stylized version of the Snake Man logo from Masters of the Universe. So I really, really like that. 
So it's hard plastic armor and it is removable, but I will say it's a bit hard. You're really gonna have to kind of pry like your fingernail in there, but you can pop it off at the sides like so, and then you can pull it off of the shoulder. Sometimes removing the head definitely helps with removing the armor there. And once we get the armor off, you can see that he actually has this really cool snake skin print on his torso. So this is another one where like I mentioned that, you know, a lot of the characters, you've been able to remove the Masters of the Universe elements to make a standard looking wrestling figure. Jake's another one where you can't really do that, but he's very, very gimmicky. Now, we can do that if you're willing to do some of that mixing and matching. Like you can remove the torso here um, and a great one that I was able to do, like I just pulled the torso off the Hulk Hogan figure that comes with the Snake Mountain ring because he's just got like a blank torso and white wrist tape. So you can pop that on the Jake the Snake legs, use the Jake the Snake head, boom, you've got yourself a more basic Jake the Snake. So it is possible if you're willing to do some mixing and matching. But back to this Jake here, he's got this great snake print torso and he's got this action feature where the face is removable. Look at this. He's actually got a face mask that comes off and reveals a snake face underneath, has a very cool King Hiss like vibe to it, but he almost has like more of a snake face look to him. Really cool. So like you could totally line this dude up with your snake men figures and masters of the universe and make another character for them. It actually fits in pretty well and it's really, really neat looking. So aside from the removable face and the armor, he does also come with Damien. That's right, we've got a little snake here. Um, he's just made of a very pliable plastic. The only paint really is just the two black dots for his eyes. Otherwise, he's just molded in this pliable green plastic. He's not bendy. I wish he was bendy. If this had like a wire in it so we can really pose it around and bend it, I think that would be better. But I'm still glad he comes with Damien and you can find some fun ways to wrap it around the figure, pose him with it and stuff like that. It works out really really well um, especially like I said if you want to do some mixing and matching and just make a retro style Jake the Snake figure that's pretty awesome and it's something really cool you can do so this guy's really fun I think there's a lot of cool things going on with these I actually really like this armor um, I do want to talk about it like it's got what looks like the removable plate in it, like from Masters Classics, but also like Macho, I think I showed, it's glued in place, it's not removable. I can't pop that out, um, I tried. So it's not something that's meant to swap on there. Um, but it's really cool. You could totally mix and match it with your Origins figures and stuff like that if you want. Um, you know, I, I thought this looked really cool, like a snake armor Skeletor. How great does that look? So yeah, Jake the Snake, super fun figure. Let me in. <laughs> This is one I'm really excited about. The Fiend perfectly translates to this toy line. I mean, and basically they didn't even give him any Masters of the Universe parts. This is straight up just The Fiend, but in a five and a half inch vintage style. It is really, really cool. So we've got the vest there, which is pliable, totally removable if you want. Really easy to do that if you like pop the arms out of socket. So if you want to remove the vest, you can do that there. Um, the head sculpt on this dude is awesome. You got that great fiend looking mask there. You got the hair, which has actually got some really nice kind of dry brushing in there for some detailing. Um, this is just an awesome looking figure. And check it out. He's totally got an articulated jaw. Look at that, we got the little hinge at the jaw so you can actually open and close the mouth. Let me in. I absolutely love it. But they did give him a bit of a Masters of the Universe touch with these interchangeable pieces for his hands. So definitely a bit of a trap jaw vibe going on here. And the way you do this is you'll just pop those hands out of the socket at the wrist like I showed you you can do. And in their place, you can plug in a mace or an axe, which is really, really cool. So these are just molded in black plastic. They're very similar to what you would see with Trap Jaw because they even have these little hooks on there. The Trap Jaw figure in Masters of the Universe has those because he's got loops on his belt so we can hang them. We don't really have that with Bray Wyatt, but we do have these little pieces on the, these little holes, these little slots here on the back of his jacket. Now, it's a bit hard to get the ax on there. It's, you know, it's a bit of a struggle. You kind of, because the ax kind of gets in the way and you got to find the right spot. It definitely works better with the mace. So I guess if that's something you want to do, 
See if we can get it here. I've definitely gotten it before. It's a little tough to do because, there we go, because of the shape of the weapon. But yeah, you can totally hang those off of his back if that's something you want to do there. Um, or, of course, you can interchange his hands. And not just one, but you could do both. So if you want to swap it out so he turns both hands into these crazy oversized weapons, that's something that's really cool. And something else really neat that I noticed, if you look at the mold here, you can see the words heal and hurt imprinted which is the same words that are on the gloves that fiend has so anybody of course that is a fan would know that so i thought that was a really really nice touch with these two weapons here now worth noting we're talking about how this is similar to trap jaw from masters of the universe we've talked about how parts are interchangeable between origins so if we bring in Trap Jaw from Masters of the Universe Origins, I want to show you guys that these weapons don't fit into Trap Jaw's arm cannon. And that's because they designed these with the wrist peg size so that they just plug in place of his hands, not in the peg size for the weapons arm. So these do not work on Trap Jaw's weapon arm. Now, if you want to just swap out Trap Jaw's hand, you can just plug them into those sockets. So it's interchangeable in that way, but not interchangeable in the way of giving Trap Jaw some new weapons for his arm cannon, which admittedly is a bit of a bummer because I know that we're always looking for extra weapons to give to our Trap Jaw figure. Um, so I definitely wanted to point that out so that you guys knew. But aside from that, I think Bray Wyatt is super fun and an excellent addition to this lineup. And that brings us to the heroic pitier of fools himself, Mr. T. Somebody I didn't think we would actually be seeing in this line, but with Mattel recently getting the ability to make Mr. T as a WWE figure, I can totally see why they did it. No brainer, right? They already put him out in the regular line. Now we've got him in the master's line and it is awesome because this also fits totally in with that 80s aesthetic. In fact, we've had vintage Mr. T action figures in this classic kind of Remco style, this classic five and a half inch style um, from stuff like the Rocky line, which I can do a comparison time for you guys. Just don't mind the fact that my vintage one is naked because he's missing his shorts. But otherwise, it's pretty neat seeing we've got like a modern retro figure and an actual vintage figure of Mr. T in this style. Really, really cool stuff. So the figure itself is really neat because basically he's in like his WrestleMania one gear with the red tights there. Uh, we've got the gold boots with the blue laces and the red laces, which I absolutely love. But of course, one thing that really makes him stand out is the fact that he has got on Jitsu's armor. And again, if I line him up with the vintage Jitsu action figure and the Masters of the Universe Classics Jitsu from a couple years ago, you can see that they're utilizing that Classics version, which you can really tell again by looking at the back because there's holsters for weapons that were from Jitsu that Mr. T definitely doesn't have. <laughs> so um, I don't think this means that we're getting Jitsu anytime soon in Origins. We might be, but I'm willing to bet the armor will be different than this. Um, so it's done in like blue and gold, which looks really cool. But the other thing that links him to Jitsu is the fact that he's got some very cool gloves that we can slide on. So he's got like a chopping hand like Jitsu, but he's also got a closed fist like Fisto. Now we saw this firstly with... Um, Roman Reigns in this line, but now we've got it molded in that gold. So these just slide right over Mr. T's fists. Um, they are gold, of course, because they are golden gloves, which is a great little nod to the boxing. Um, and you know what? It's pretty cool. It's like Mr. T is a reference to both Fisto and Jitsu in one action figure. He's got the powers of both of those guys. Super, super fun stuff. Now, Mr. T is definitely one of those guys that we can make look like a standard wrestler. Um, we can remove the armor very easily. You can just kind of pull it off on the sides there, remove it from the pegs. You can pop the head off, slide it over the body, and boom. The only thing about him now is the fact that he's got like these metal wrist bracers. But otherwise, we've basically got ourselves a standard wrestling Mr. T action figure. Uh, and it is incredible. I mean, this is so, so cool. I love this one. He's an easy standout from this wave. Probably my personal favorite. I'm just a little giddy that we've got Mr. T in this style. He's fantastic. We got to pair him up with like Hulk Hogan. If you've got the Snake Mountain ring, you definitely got to put him and Hogan together. It's awesome.
So there you go, my friends. There is a look at the wave four of the masters of the WWE universe lineup. I think these are just super fun. I've talked about in the past how I like these so much because we did get some wrestling action figures back in the 5.5 style originally in the 80s with like the Remco AWA figures. So I think it's awesome that we've got kind of this weird mishmash of Masters of the Universe and WWE that not only gives us some really fun mashups, but also kind of gives us a modern day wrestling line in that vintage scale. I think they are super fun because of that. And the character selection has been really great. I am shocked that we are this deep in, that we have gotten so many figures from this lineup. This seemed like one of those real niche things where we were gonna get a couple figures and then that's it. But here we are three waves deep, two play sets deep, so many figures, and the cast is really, really awesome. It's a great wave. It is hitting Walmart stores right now. It actually has been hitting for about a month or so. Um, it's unfortunately a Walmart exclusive. It makes these a bit difficult to track down. So definitely keep an eye on walmart.com because they do tend to come in and out of stock um, and hit your local Walmart stores if you're able to and keep an eye out for these guys because it is definitely a super fun wave. Thank you guys so very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, my friends. The Toys of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe is available for pre-order now. This official guidebook is published by Dark Horse Books and features over 750 pages of photos and information on your favorite He-Man and She-Ra action figures. And don't miss out on the exclusive bundle pack available for pre-order now from PowerCon. This bundle includes the official guide as well as an exclusive character guide supplement that you won't be able to buy anywhere else. Don't miss out. You have the power.